Hi, I am Valder Beebe. I am the host and the visionary of That Celebrity Interview. Good morning, Sheriff Jonathan Harden. How are you? Doing great. Well, thank you so very much. I was speaking about you earlier. I come on a lot earlier than I get to you to, today. And people were telling me they know a lot about A&E 60 days in. I'm just catching up. So we're going to talk about this real slice of life. That's what I call it. Could you tell me why do people do 60 days in? That I can't answer. I certainly wouldn't. <laughs> uh, but from the participants' angle, you know, we're certainly uh, blessed and thankful that they do because it, it gives us a wealth of information to better the facility. And, and certainly we learned a lot uh, in this season to come. Well, uh, Sheriff Horton, it, you get people from all walks of life. And I'm sure they have all different reasons. I saw the one with the correction officer. He didn't make it past intake personally. He was ready to get out of there. But then you have these women and these varied careers. What gives them the strength to do this? You know, like you said, many very different uh, backgrounds. We had, you know, for instance, a uh, at-risk youth uh, teacher, an alternative school teacher from the Midwest, and she deals with a lot of troubled kids. So she wanted to go in so that she could come out and through her educational experiences be able to say, hey, I know why you don't want to go to jail. This is why you need to turn your life around. And, you know, there was a lot of people in that nature. There was another, you know, participant uh, that was from the, the Northwest that uh, was a former Marine and a home inspector, and he had a friend that had a very bad experience in jail, so he wanted to go see for himself, what's that like? And uh, so different reasons, different folks, but, you know, in the end, a lot of them had their own agenda, and uh, and certainly ours was just to learn from them what they learned on the inside so that we could make adjustments to be more effective and safe for the correctional officers and inmates. Okay, you won your position through a hard-fought election. It was very, very contentious. And now you are the sheriff over this. I need to ask you this because I don't know this. Has jail always been this detrimental? You know, it's uh, no, ma'am. I don't believe so. It, it had, The facility had become inadequate over the last several years. And when I took office, uh, there were 212 broken door locks. Uh, the cameras hadn't worked in three years. Uh, most of the windows were damaged on the exterior of the building where there's no perimeter fences. And without the cameras working, for example, you know, drugs could course itself up. Uh, an inmate made rope in the middle of the night into that broken window. Uh, the morale of the jail was, was rock bottom. Uh, since I've been in office, since the findings of this show, uh, all the door locks are fixed, all the windows are fixed, all the cameras, 300 plus are working. The correctional officers have received a, a three-step raise. Uh, we went from hiring, you know, a year before I took office, 20 a month to three a month. We, you know, we got a full house right now, knock on wood, thank God. It's, it's been a complete turnaround, but, you know, there's a lot of bad, a lot of people concerned, you know, from my neck of the woods about, wow, this is going to look really, really bad. Uh, but one of the things I campaigned on was transparency. And if you don't pull the bed sheets back and see the problems, how can you fix them? So uh, we've seen a lot of problems. We've made a lot of progress. We still have a long way to go. But uh, thankfully to this show, uh, there's been more good come to us from the bad you'll see. It's, it's, it's been very beneficial. Okay. Uh, I talked about, to, about you earlier coming on, and I've got some questions. I want to take this one from Facebook. Uh -huh. This poster says, and I don't know who these people are, and I, and I don't even reveal their post name, but the poster says, as he has aged into being a senior citizen in his early 60s, life has not been what he's expected. He hasn't saved for retirement. His previous stint in the Army is not yielding much for him. And he thinks going to jail would give him a better life than trying to make it on his own. What do you say about that? I, I, I don't really understand that philosophy. Uh, you know, jail wouldn't be a place for me. Uh, you know, so uh, that would be tough to understand. Uh, I really don't understand that. So I don't. Um, is it, what is, do you think it's saying something more about our American society? Because, but we keep touting. Uh, I watch the spot, stock market every day. You know, stocks are as high as they've ever been. People are making money. I don't think you and I might not be making as much money. But people say they're making as money. Their jobs are plentiful. It's the best it's been. But yet someone feels like this. That, that's yeah. very disheartening for America overall for someone to say that. Right. 
as we move into your new season, what, what's the most surprising thing we're going to see? You're going to see a facility, as I'd reiterated earlier, or will reiterate, that it was broken. The facility itself, uh, out of control. To a sense, the inmates were running the facility. And a lot of that's because we're a direct supervision jail. And to give you, you know, five seconds on that, most jails are linear or podular, meaning the correctional officers separated from the pods and they only come in to extradite or fix a situation after it occurs. In direct supervision, you've got the correctional officer out amongst the inmates, and then the inmates can be locked in individual cells. So when the 212 broken doors were there, uh, there was no inmate compliance. There was no time out to put the inmate in. Uh, and you've got a 21, 22 year old correctional officer that, that, that needed more training that's trying and is being manipulated by 130 hardened criminals. It's just a bad situation. And, and that's the grounds or the environment that this show was birthed out of in our facility. And, uh, and of course, toward the end, these things begin to, to get fixed and, and life becomes a little better, as you would say. So uh, there was a lot. It was shocking to me, even though I knew the facility had some issues. I thought there were 50 broken door locks, not 212. I thought we might find 200 pounds of contraband in a jail of 1,000 people, not 5,000 pounds. Uh, there, there was just a lot of, of, of just plain and simple, um, just shocking to find that the issues were as paramount as they were. My hat off to you and your leadership and your team. When can we watch this? I think we all need a dose of reality from A&E 60 Days In. When do you want us to watch this? This is going to premiere January the 2nd. That's a Thursday, 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central Time there in Dallas. And uh, we'll continue to show every Thursday at 9 o'clock you guys' time every Thursday there after January the 2nd. I will keep this in front of my audience because I want them to talk about it and to blog about it because this is really important. Um, Sheriff Horton, and thank you so very much. You seem so normal for this abnormal job. <laughs> Thanks for being my guest on the Valder BB Show. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you. Good to speak with you, Valder. Hi, I'm Valder BB. I host the Valder BB Show broadcast on radio and television, and this is my phone pouch. My phone pouch is a great invention. It allows me to go hands-free, pocket-free, purse-free, even belt-free. Head on over to myphonepouch.com. Hi, I'm Valder Beebe, host of the Valder Beebe Show. I have used Credit Help USA, the credit restoration company that's bonded and state certified. When you become a client of Credit Help USA, you become eligible for a set of stainless steel cookware from Credit Help USA and the Valder BB Show. Get your credit straight today. Visit credithelptx.com, click on the Valder BB Show icon, and get started living life divinely.